Hello, this is Domenico Composto with EasyNomics, and today we're going to go over non-price determinants of demand and how this relates to total revenue. So let's take a few notes. In class, you've been learning about variables other than price, so price is being held constant, that has an impact on the demand curve. So this is, this is what we call non-price determinants. of demand. So price is constant. All right, so we have our demand curve sloping down. D1. And we have price being held constant. All right, perhaps it is P1 with a quantity demanded at Q1. All right. Price is constant, but with non-price determinants, there's some force, some other variable, that's causing the demand to either shift out or potentially to shift in, which will affect the total revenue of the firm. So total revenue is a simple formula. It is equal to the price of the good times the quantity of that good sold. Simply, we can state that total revenue is equal to price times quantity. So here we see the total revenue as this square or rectangular shape. Price P1 times Q1 is the total revenue for this particular firm. So I can label it as total revenue 1 is equal to price 1 times Q1. Now what firms would like to do is to get their demand curve to increase, because as it increases, they get more total revenue. So as demand increases due to a non-price determinant of demand from D1, to D2, and price is held constant at P1, they can earn more total revenue. And, see we, and here we see that increase from Q1, oop, from Q1 to Q2. All right, so as a result of that increase in demand from D1 to D2, total revenue is increased to, we'll call it total revenue two, which is now equal to P1, price is constant, times an increased quantity at Q2. And we can state that the surface area of total revenue two is greater than the surface area of total revenue one. All right, total revenue two is greater than total revenue one. Another way I can explain this on an exam is I can label these rectangular areas. I can label this rectangular area, let's say it's area A, and I can label this rectangular area as area B. So I can also state that total revenue 1, which is price times quantity 1, is equal to the area of A in the graph. And then total revenue 2, which is equal to price, P1, which is constant, times a greater quantity at Q2, is equal to A plus B. Thus, again, proving that total revenue 2 is greater than total revenue 1, and the firm has generated more revenue. So firms uh, spend a lot of money on marketing their product, building up the brand, advertising their product, getting celebrity sponsors to popularize their product, all in the hopes that the demand is increasing, which would lead to an increase in total revenue. Now, some things to notice about demand, D1 and D2, as you will, uh, as you've probably been learning in class, that the demand curve is equal to our marginal benefit curve, MB2. That is the additional benefit that consumers get by consuming another unit of a good, which ties into the law of diminishing marginal benefit. But we're also going to see later in the course that demand equals average revenue. Now I'm just going to call this AR1 or 
let's just call that AR2 so we're all consistent here. Average revenue is the average price of the goods that and services, the average price that the good or service is sold at. And it's a simple formula of AR, average revenue, is equal to the total revenue of the product divided by the quantity of those goods sold. And that essentially tells us what is the average price. So this is another way of saying price. How is that? Well, remember, total revenue is price times quantity. So total revenue is price times quantity over the quantity of units sold. So these cancel, and basically average revenue is another way of saying price. So we can remember that demand is equal to marginal benefit, which is equal to average revenue, which is another way of saying the price of the good or service sold. In this case, it's P1, all right? P1 is right here. So let's not forget that. We'll see this later in the course when we get to a portion called theory of the firm. Let's quickly go over the uh, five non-price determinants of demand that you are responsible for as IB students. So I'm going to just quickly erase our notes here now that we understand that firms are seeking to increase their total revenue by having their demand curve shift out. And they'll do that through marketing, advertising, branding, celebrity sponsors, etc. Okay, so I'm just going to get rid of all of these notes. Okay, all of these notes, and we're just going to quickly review what these non-price determinants are. So number one is income. Any change in income, and I'll, I'll put the symbol for delta, a change in income will result in a change in the demand for goods and services. As people are able to gain more income, we would expect increased demand for certain goods. And we'll talk about that when we get into YED, or income elasticity of demand. So that's another lesson. And vice versa. If income, which is Y, the symbol is Y, falls, demand for goods and services, um, such as luxuries, will decrease. And again, we'll cover that in um, when we get to YED, income elasticity of demand. Two, tastes and preferences. If the tastes and preferences of consumers change, then demand could potentially change. And again, I'll put the symbol for delta change, any change in tastes and preferences will lead to a change in the demand curve. This is another way of saying if a good is popular or not, or is it becoming increasingly popular or increasingly unpopular. So again, here the marketing and the advertising and the influencer sponsorships and celebrity sponsorships comes into play um, and explains why firms do this. They get their demand to increase because they've popularized their product. Three, Future price expectations. So if consumers perhaps expect that prices could go up in the future for a particular product, their demand for it now might increase because they want to buy it before the price rises. Four, price of related goods. And I already have a video that discusses this. Price of related goods, which includes substitutes oops and in my video regarding this i use coke and pepsi as an example we graph and analyze that substitutes or complementary goods goods that are, that are an accessory to a more dominant good like iphone cases are a complement to iphones and last but not least number five the number of consumers which is another way of saying the size of the market. And this ties into demographics, dem demographic changes, changes in the population. As the population gets uh, larger or smaller, that can influence the demand curve. Um, the baby boom generation after the 1950s was a big um, spike in the population. And so those led to increased demand for baby products when they were babies. And as the baby boomers became teenagers, increased demand for things that teenagers were consuming, etc. 
So let's focus on the uh, income, just to illustrate how non-price determinants of demand, as they increase or decrease, lead to increase or decrease total revenue. So let's look at income as an example. Singapore uh, experienced a significant change in their per capita income, gross national income per capita. Let's look at it over time. And back in 1990, they uh, were earning 23,000, if we go back here, $22,430 purchasing power parity in 1990. And we can see that over time from 1990 onward to 2018, it has increased to $94,000 purchasing power parity. So income is rising over time from 22 to 94. In the case of Singapore, we also see it rising for Hong Kong, also rising for Malaysia. So when we graph a change in income, income is rising. And so that's leading to an increase in demand for goods and services, particularly luxury goods, normal goods in Singapore. So firms in Singapore that sell normal goods and luxury goods, and we'll talk more about that when we get to elasticity, are seeing their demand increase from D1 to D2. That results in an increase in total revenue, which was originally P1 times Q1, now it's increased to P1 times Q2. So greater total revenue for these firms. All right, so hopefully we have a better understanding of these concepts of non-price determinants, how changes in these non-price determinants lead to either a, ch a change in demand, either increasing or decreasing, which will impact total revenue for the firm. So let me just do a quick analysis um, as we would on a paper one, or potentially a paper two, paper three for the new syllabus. And we're gonna use the uh, example and data of Singapore, all right? So as can be seen, we have a graph for a particular market. Let's just say that this is the market for cars, all right? Just cars in general. This is the market for cars. We're measuring quantity on the x-axis and price on the y-axis. We have two downward sloping demand curves according to the law of demand labeled D1 and D2. We can note that demand is equal to marginal benefit, which is equal to average revenue, which is equal to price. Um, price, the average price of cars being set at P1 provides a quantity demanded at Q1. And we notice that the initial total revenue, which we'll call TR1, is equal to the price of those vehicles, P1, times the quantity of those vehicles sold, which is also equal to the surface area of A, letter A. As a result of uh, GNI per capita rising, gross national income per capita rising in Singapore from $22,430 purchasing power parity in 1990 to $94,670 uh, purchasing power parity, people in Singapore are becoming increasingly wealthy Thus, they can consume more cars. So the demand for cars has increased from D1 to D2. Prices held constant for cars, but at D2, the quantity demanded is at Q2. So here we see that there's been an increase in total revenue, which we'll call total revenue two, which is equal to a constant price of P1 times an increased quantity consumed at Q2 which is equal to the areas of A plus B. Thus, as income, Y is the symbol for income, rises, that leads to a demand, or that leads to an increase in the demand for luxury goods such as cars, which leads to the total revenue rising for these firms that sell cars. Total revenue two being greater than the initial total revenue one. All right, that's it for today. Thank you so much. And until next time.